what is the definition of education and getting to tell this to a group of educationists who have been there for decades in education is a little difficult. So I'll simply take the help of Google and get you from the wiki. Transfer of knowledge, skills and values from one generation to another. Very simple. It used to happen with families. A carpenter son became a carpenter, an Ayurvedic doctor son became a doctor and so on. But then it changed and then it became institutionalized. And then the government got into it and you know, the rest of it you know the story, what's happening. So, but everybody forgot the student. When I started the first of the hundred schools for art of living in Karnataka in 2000, I went through the Karnataka Education Act every single line. There was not even one word on education there. It was an education act, but no word on education. How should the school be? How should you employ? How should you fire? What should be the leave? Nothing on education. They had forgotten the child. So let's look at knowledge, right? I want you to tell me, right? Knowledge. So what does it mean? Knowledge of? Transfer of knowledge. So what, what do you want to transfer from one generation to another? Science? Culture. Culture? What else? Come on. Moral. No, that's different. It's knowledge, skills and values. Three things. What is knowledge? Culture. Know-how. Very good. Know-how. Science. Fundamental principles of physics, maths. It's a little bit. All of this comes under knowledge. I mean, it's growing by the day. Volumes is amazing. The data available on the internet today, all data, today, 90% of the data was accumulated in the last one year. 90%. And it's in trillions and trillions of bytes. And that's all knowledge of the universe. Skills. What skills do we want to transfer from our generation to the other? You know, a lot of us, we go through the schooling system, and I was in IIT. I, I had my classmate who was an electrical engineer, and we were in the second year. I went into his room, it was dark. I said, what's happened? He said, the tube light is gone. I said, okay, students amenity center, get a tube light and change it. I don't know. Electrical engineer, second year in IIT, he didn't know to change a tube light. I'm so worried now because he's a professor of electrical engineering in IIT Bombay. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got to decide what skills is that we need to transfer from our generation to next. Right? Now the values part of it. Okay? All of us all of us want to do this. We want to make sure that value education or education with values is part of everybody's life. And if you take a sum total of knowledge, skills and values, you should honestly evaluate how much can a school give and how much the whole world needs to give. How much can a child learn in a school versus learning everywhere else? Unless the school is amazing, like we heard in the earlier panel, which has all of these things possible in the school. Right? The skills are given, the values are given, the knowledge is given, then it's a great school. And the moment it's a great school, what will happen to the consumers, the students? Will they not fight to get into that school? Imagine if all the schools were like that, then they would fight to get into the school. That's what the last panel was talking about. How can we get the children to decide which school they need to get into because of wanting to know that I will get good education in this school. So if you instead shift from education to learning, because all about education is about what we as educators, organizers, administrators, government policy, NGOs, want to transfer to the next generation. But learning is about what the next generation wants to do. right? But the problem we have is what Einstein said. The problems of this world cannot be solved by the same thinking that caused them in the first place. So if we are going to give them education, we've got to make them think beyond our level of thinking. 
All right? So I would say that what we have been trying to do from the art of living in many institutions is how can we, because it's closely connected, education and society is closely connected. A really truly developed society is one in which all the schools are full and all the prisons empty. And as the schools keep giving better and better education, which is co comprising all the three things, if we get a violence-free society, a disease-free body, a quiver-free breath, a stress-free mind, an inhibition-free intellect, a trauma-free memory, an ego that encompasses all, and a sorrow-free soul, that's the birthright of every individual. So we need to move from focusing only on ourselves to how can we focus on the children, what should they be learning, how should they be learning. Then if you leave that to happen, and, and we've seen that change now, all children born after 2000 are not the same as the ones bef born before 2000. How many of you agree with this? You know, I've, I've been doing parenting and children programs for a long time, and I see the clear difference. They really are responsible. They want to take responsibility for their learning. And some of the people I've been speaking to in this conference, they give me examples of schools which have made this happen. So sharing and meetings like this, sharing these experiences, sharing each other's best practices in the field of education, and moving away from focusing on our own institutions to how we can make the learning happen is going to be the future. And one of the panelists talked about Dr. Sugata Mitra. I've been working with many people in the field of technology-enabled learning. I'm a visiting professor in a university. I do online exams, online classes. It's happening. Economies of scale will ensure that lots of education and learning will happen by children on their own, and I think that is going to make a big difference. So we must think about, and I'll be looking forward to taking some questions from you on this, because of lack of time, I'm not talking a little more on you know, what is the technology enabler that's happening in education, but I think it's time for us to look at Einstein's talk and the definition of education itself and see what is it that we must do to get the children to really learn. How can we enable learning and focus on that mode? Thank you very much.